we're going to start this from the, the basics. So what we have here, which everyone should know, is a bullish trend, right? We have higher highs and higher lows being created, right? On the way up, right? And should should price reverse, you'd see a breaking of this low, a tap back in, and another short. A tap back in, and another short, right? A tap back in, and another short, right? So let's just make these, let's give them colors. So the red is going up and the green is going down. And I'm doing this on purpose because some of you guys are in this mindset that because you see green going up in the candles, you immediately want to jump into a long because you see green going up. No. We make moves based on what the market does, the cycles that the market operates within, right? So for that matter, we have red up and green down, right? So if you look within here, let me um, just get rid of some of this right here. If you look within the bullish market structure, what you actually see is something we call swings, right? If you guys watched video two of the public playlist, you would understand that we have a low here and we have a high. And then we have another low put in and we have another high. So this is not swing high, swing low. That is ICT. DTFX is we have a high, we have a low. Sorry, we have a we have a low, we have a high. We have another low, we have another high. When we put in that second high, what we have below us is what we call the previous range. What is the previous range? The previous range is not the low and the swing high. The previous range is the previous low that took out that high to the left and that old high together. So when you're drawing the zone, it's from the high to the low, right? Before price reversed and took the high. So it's the previous high and the previous low. I can't say it any slower than that. It's the previous high, right? And the previous low. And, and maybe somebody else might get confused. So let me just put it this way. High, low, high, right? We have that low. We have that high put in, right? Usually we broke up above some previous high that's back here to the left, right? That's what we call a market structure shift or market structure break or violation of a high. This is what we call the flip in the videos. It just price trades up above the previous high. It's flipping price, right? So when we're drawing our fibs, I need you guys to understand this because we, we get this a lot and a lot of people will spend months doing this and not understanding that they are wrong. So look, we have we have this previous, let me just just create something here just so it shows that we went up above it cool so we have this previous high and this previous low before price traded up and broke it right 
that means that you're not fibbing the low and the high that broke the old, the new high that broke the old high. That's what ICT does. This is what people who trade Fibonacci's do. I do not do this. I do not teach this. So what I'm actually showing you is the previous high and low as that range that I create, right? And after creating that range, I'm putting the Fibonacci, as you guys see, or the GAN, whatever it is you want to call it, because here's, here's the Fib there too. I'm putting it behind, well, that high right there, right? And this low right here. So it does not go from swing low to swing high. Where it actually goes is right here from the previous high into the low that it put in, right? Before running back up above that old high. So that is what we call our zone, right? So that's just the basics of what we're doing when we talk about price trading back into the previous range. So as you can see, we have this high up above here into this low down below here. And we see that price ran its way up above that old high. Now that's how we mark out the zone, right? And we're anticipating price as the playlist has taught to trade into the 50% of the zone, right? We're expecting this to drop into that 50%. And we're expecting price to what? Now trade out of it. And the first target is the high that put in this low. But if you trade on the conservative side, which I do, and a lot of people think I don't because <laughs> the system provides so many opportunities that they think I'm just scalping all over the place. I'm not. I take the 50% and I get out at the high of that zone, right? Because that's my one-to-one. -one. I'm risking the zone, the, the back of the zone. That's where my stop loss always goes. My entry is right here into the 50% of it. And I'm targeting a one-to-one. -one. So what's so powerful about this, the system in general, is that when we trade back in, by the time we leave out of that zone, we're already at a one-to-one, -one, right? And anything else is surplus. So this is how we mark out our zones. Now, what we have here is multiple zones. We have and it's not just multiple zones, it's market structure. But the previous high and low in market structure is the zone. So what we have is a zone there, a zone there, a zone there, a zone there, right? And then... When we break market structure to the downside over here with this low, we have a zone there up above from this low to this high. Now, this is not, again, I need to say this a lot of times for you. This is not the OTE. This is not that you're taking the high of here and the low of here, and now that's the dealing range, and then you go back up into premium there, and then you see it go into the ulti yeet, and then head down. The 
That's not what this is. It's the same thing that we talked about on the way up. So what it actually is, is this low that was broken, right? And the high that broke that low. So what you see is this previous range to the downside. But as price continues to make its way down, we have another previous range, right? Why? Because we traded up above and then went back below that low. So that creates that previous range that's there. So likewise with the other side, we have multiple previous ranges as we're going down, right? So let me just reiterate the ones going up, right? And this should be natural if you know how to trail market structure because this is a high, this is a low. 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 No market structure broken until where? Here, right? So when that breaks, this becomes the high right up above. And this, whatever broke before it started to run back into that range, is the low so we have this high we have this low 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 right that's what we call market structure the highs and lows but the zones are what it left behind when we kept going in the direction of the trend, it left behind an up move like this. It left behind an up move before we head it down. So once we trade it back below the low of that up move and we head it down, that is now your previous range. It's very important that you guys understand this. So what we have here is highs and lows as well as our zones, our swings. That's what we call it, right? Swing point. That means price put in this high and swung down to put in a low. After it put in that low, it swung back up above the previous high, right? It swung back up above the previous high. So we call this our previous swing. Not, I need you guys to understand this. It's not our current swing. It's our previous swing okay our previous swing very very important and i'm saying this because a lot of people will spend a few months in here struggling and using it improperly and then talking about the fact that it's the mentorship that's being improperly taught for them when it's just that they have not taken any notes, they have not slowed down the videos, and they have not digested the material that's free for everyone on earth that can access YouTube. So the mentorship is not about teaching the things that are free on earth that everybody has access to. Okay, and I'm saying that as aggressive as I'm saying it because you're going to see people over time ask some of these same basic questions and show that they have not gone through the videos. They're just seeking answers for you to teach them right now, and they have not actually gone through the videos 
line upon line, precept. You, you guys get my point. So now we have these zones, right? Now there's something else about the zones that people tend to uh, <laughs> skip over or FOMO thinking that they can do something other than what's taught. They can shortcut it instead of sticking to what's taught and learning to build on top of that. So what am I saying? You see this low that swings up into this high. And then we have this high that swings down into that low. You see that? It swings down there. And whenever we get this low, you can see a swing back above what? That high, right? So what I need you guys to understand is that when it breaks up above that previous high, you see the green high, that previous high, this low down below is not a valid or a protected low until we close up above that green high that green line that encompasses the high that put in the low. It is not a protected or a validated low. If we do not get a closure above that high. Likewise, right there. The next high, right? This low is not a validated or a protected low until we get up above that previous high and close body close. You guys hear me? Body closures. There will be times where you guys get wicks up above these highs and we trade back in if we get a wick up above this high and we trade back in more than likely it's not looking to get back up here it's looking to now go to the downside why because it's a failure to close up above the previous high with a body with a you hear me a wick I don't care if the bullish candle, the wick went up above it and came back in, but the wick had a body at the bottom. No, I don't care if the next candle opened after the wick was put in and the next candle had a body closure, but the wick of that body closure did not go up above the previous high. No, it doesn't count. It needs to be a body closure up above the previous high, okay? It needs to be, no matter what. I don't care if the Pope tells you otherwise. I don't care if your mother tells you otherwise. I don't care who it is in your life. If it's to save your life, you better lose it. It's a body closure, right, y'all? A body closure, very important. Those are little things that people forget and get margin call because they're chasing price and, and they're not chasing order flow. They're chasing what price is doing and they're not chasing how to get in the vehicle as order flow is moving into the direction that structure is looking for, right? So we have that high there right now we have that high there right now we have that high there right so tell me if price deviated from here and went in to put in a new high above of this but it was a wick and that wick still did not get a closure up above this previous high 
when this high was put in. That other wick that was put in did not get a closure. Is that a valid low? Great. It's not a valid low. So likewise, when we talk about the bullish component of it, what we also want to address is the bearish part of it. With the bearish part, we have this low right here. And up here, a body closure happened up above here, right? A body closure happened and then came down and closed with a body down here. Is that considered a market structure shift or a market structure break or a violation of a protected low in turn looking for downside now? Anybody that says no, you you you, uh, you better not. Yes, that's 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 what that is. It's we call it a bearish flip. That's what you hear in the videos all the time. I don't like saying market structure break because so many people got different ideas of what a market structure break is. I only have one. It's a body. So when we're trading When we're trading up above a previous high that's over here and we see it break up above that and now we're trading back into that previous range, right? We call this a bullish flip. What is a bullish flip? You have a low, you have a high, you have another low that what? What do we need the low to do, right? We need the low to close below that previous low to in order to validate this high, in order to call that a protected high, right? So then we trade up above the protected high. The only time we could start looking for longs is after we get a body closure below and we validate this protected high, we trade up above it and get what? What do we say down below? A body closure up above that previous high. That's when we are now what? Taking that previous range that we started with, that we discussed, and we're looking for price. to trade back into that range in order to continue trading higher. That is the basics of video one and two. So we call that flip in there a bullish flip because now price is flipping and trading to the other direction. And we call this here a bearish flip. That's what's mentioned in the videos, a bearish flip. Now we're expecting price to trade back into what? The previous range. And then we begin looking for downside, right? So this is very, very, very basic, but the most powerful thing you could ever trade with in today's market. The most powerful. Nothing else is needed. Not your, because I don't use imbalances anymore because they provide too much drawdown. Not your imbalances, not your breaker that's back here, not whatever other stuff you believe, the inversion coming from over there, through there, from, from the time Tupac got shot back here. We're using the 92 inversion to tap into here, and it's not that. It's just the swings alone right guys the swings the swings the swings 
The swings. Oh, do we have a break? The swings. The swings. The swings. The swings. Again, this cannot be considered a swing, right? Unless we trade it below this low that put in this high with a body. Body closure and i'm saying it this slow and i'm saying it this repetitive because we have people who joined back in march of last year still asking questions about whether it's a body or a wick unacceptable body so Now let me take the fibs out and show you guys this with fibs. The values there, the percent, and let's change the color. So you see, it's at the 50%, right? You see the next one? It's at the 50%, right? You see the next one? It's at the 50%, right? This is not, again, again. This is not the OTE 50%. This is the previous range 50%, right? So... Let me actually get back to this one. So look at this. We have this down move that traded up above and put in a high, right? And shifted back in to that 50%. But what happened here? And this is what a lot of you guys need to understand. Just because you mark out a swing doesn't mean that it's going to hold. I marked it so the market has to respect it. No, this does not mean it's going to hold. So you have that 50% that's there and we trade below and break the low of that previous zone that we talked about, right? And what we end up doing, because one of your swings will be invalidated. You guys gotta get used to that. So that's why you don't trade with insane size. What we have here is now that previous range that we talked about, right? Up there, cause we broke the low. So that previous range Let's make this a different color. Let's make it yellow. You see the 50% of the previous range? Again, y'all, that is not your OTE 50%. That is the 50% of the previous range, okay? So now that we know that it's the 50% of the previous range, as we continue, as we continue to make our way down, you see, it's the 50% again of that previous range. Then we put in a low here, right? And it's the 50% of that previous range. And then that's, that's then we put in a low here and we trade back up to what? The 50%. And we target the low. Now, I don't target the low. I'm content with one-to-ones. I've taken an account from $700 to $89,000 in two weeks utilizing one-to-ones. So... The whole idea that one-to-ones do not work is completely 
completely idiocy. And it comes from people who do not know how to trade. When you have a high win rate and when you have a high RR, that's a great system. But when you understand that more times than not, your system pays you almost 95% of the time, your system pays you on a one-to-one -one more than targeting anything else. Guess what you guys are going to resort to, right? A one-to-one. -one. Because that's the money maker. That's the money maker. So this same exact idea that I'm talking about, right, guys? The same exact idea. This is not on a time frame, right? I'm talking about the market's cycle, the way the market moves. I'm not discussing a time frame. This has nothing to do with the one minute, the 12 minute, the 144, the hourly, the daily, the weekly, the year. Nothing. It's, it's not completely tied to that. It's everything. I'm not even talking about a time frame chart. Go to a Renko chart. Go to a line chart. Whatever chart you want to go to. This is the way that the market moves. But is this reality? Does it always 100% of the time move this way? No. It does not. But in order for you to engage with the reality part of it, how it actually moves, you first need to understand the basic movement of it. Because in a healthy market, it's going to move and touch back into these 50%. In a healthy market. In an unhealthy market, it's going to have deeper mitigations to it. That, and, and those deeper mitigations, what I mean by that is that we trade up, we trade back in like that, right? Let, let's say that the, the high is here. The 50% is right here. We trade it all the way down into here and move back up to here. More than likely, when that delivers, you'll see a move back down like that. When that delivers. And now the low is broken that put in this high. But guess what? It never allowed you to get back in. Until sometime later on that it came back up to what? Tap into the previous range. So you first must become successful with what is already laid out here. Train your eye for it. You can any pair you want. Crypto, Forex, futures, stocks, bonds, whatever, commodities, anything. Thing. Go and use the 10 year minus the two year. Go, whatever it is you want to use. Any kind of metric. Go and look at a chart of the speed of light. Go and look at a chart of the, the average income of Americans. Go and look at any kind of chart that has movement to it, that tracks data. This is what happens. Even your equity curve. Even your equity curve, it all is bound by structure, okay? It's all bound by structure. Everything, no matter what it is, there's nothing that this does not apply to. There is no time frame that is exempt from this. From the tick chart, the one second chart, all the way down to, all the way up to the highest chart you can get to and back it works on everything. But there needs to be reality with it. Some people think reality is this. We create a high, we put in a low, right? We trade up above that previous high. We tap back in to that previous range and here you have some people they want to get in there with their stop loss like this yet don't even know how to refine yet don't even understand the fractal nature of price and knowing when to find what this flipped on the larger time frame right 
But this also happens within here. So now, if your stop loss, if you want it, a lower stop loss, if you want to achieve a smaller one, instead of having the stop loss that's back here behind the whole zone, instead of having a large stop loss like that, I don't know who's going to have a 218-point stop loss, but it's probably those people on the sleeping bag time frames. But you can reduce your risk. There are other videos that will come that will teach you how to reduce your risk. That will teach you what the POIs are within there that you can look to trust to take your entry, right? But we have to build on the basics because not everyone is there. Some people have admitted it, and I'm, I'm glad that they did because I don't have to spend the live stream sessions tearing people up for something they should have listened to and done prior to this. So I'm happy that some people came out and said this because now we can take this backtesting session and mix it with not only backtesting, but catching some of you guys up just the same way the next two weeks will be. This is not to ask what a fractal is. This is not to explain any of that stuff. That stuff has already been explained. And if you went to just backtest all the times you saw a fractal, then you'll get an idea of what a fractal means. But stopping the whole group to address something that 90% of the group already got past ends up slowing other people down. And that's unfair to the people who put in time. So this video will be the end all be all for the person that believes that they do not have the basics in play. So let's get back down to our zones, right? So we, we see that these are highs and lows, right? With zones that are trading up, right? Anybody remember video one from the free playlist? I know some of y'all gonna say yeah, and y'all lying. Some of y'all gonna say yeah, y'all actually did study it. But we have this. We have a high in here. We have a low in here. Let's say this is the this is the one minute time frame. We have a high in there. We have a low in there. We have a high in there. We have a low in there. We have a high again, right? And then we instantly put in a low, right? So we put in a little high right here. You guys can see that right at the white line. We put in a little line right there. And then we went to put in a low. We put in another high and we put in another low. Right here, right? That's where this ends. The low of that, let's say this is the 15-minute time frame. The low of the 15-minute time frame ended here. And what did we do after the low ended there? What did Bryce end up doing? Bryce ended up trading back up above. But on the one minute, what you're going to see is a push like that, right? Just a straight push back up. Now, with this push right here, I don't know why. With this push right here, let me let me uh, uh, move this out the way. With this push that trades up like that, a lot of people are caught on the one minute trying to short this. Because they say you have a low and you have a high that closed up above the previous high, right? So when we trade back into the 50%, they're trying to short it back down. But the one minute is order flow that facilitates higher time frame structure. What do I mean by that? What I mean by that is... You see the series of highs and lows that it's putting in, right? Within here. Then it goes to put in a low below that previous low, right? And then what do you see us do? What do you see us do with this? We end up 
pulling back just a little bit and then trading up like this. And now everybody is shocked. Oh my goodness. It was supposed to, that was a market structure shift. Why didn't it hold? Because the one minute is facilitating the pullback of the 15 minute. And when the 15 minute continues, more than likely from some 15 minute POI that's in here, but also an unmitigated one minute POI, we see price trade up to put in another high on a higher time frame. That's why video one is so important. It teaches you multi time frame analysis. I don't care if you think you're not a beginner. You're a beginner to the eye that I have, the perspective that I have, and what it is that I'm teaching. So you need to understand the root of it in order to be able to see what's blossoming in the market. What we see as clear as we see it. You need to know the root of it. It's so important. Very, very, very important. So now, what do we have up here? We have... this high get put in and as soon as this high gets put in we have a huge rejection back down like that right Let, let's say you you had a little little something right there and a huge rejection back down like that now for the market structure bros you see this low get taken out, right? You get a body closure below it too. Oh yeah, great. It's time to short, baby. Price trades back into that. Mind you, it's coming out of the 50% of that 15 minute POI, right? <laughs> it goes back to the 50% of it. Because there's a double top here, it taps in and shifts away and you see it go down here and you're like, oh yeah, it's going for sell sign. And what happens? I know y'all, a lot of y'all know it. I know it. We trade away and we'll be right to the other side and then actually go down to wherever it is you, you were trying to time. But now you're afraid to take a trade because you over leveraged on that larger move, lost a huge amount of money, and now you're afraid to lose more. But we're not even going to get to that psychology part of it because that'll happen later on in the mentorship. So we see we put in this low. And after putting in that low, what do we do? We go straight up. Like I said, we get a little rejection there. And then put in another high right up above there like that. Now, what we're still paying attention to with all of this price action from the one minute to the 15 minute is that the 15 minute swings still intact. That's the 15 minute protected low when we went to put in that high, right? And in order for us to say that we're bearish to go down, we need to at least take out that low. If we do not take out that low, we trade next to the low. I have a tweet from last year that I don't think anybody had liked when I originally posted it. And now you see hundreds of likes on it and stuff like that. But and this is when Stoic had me blocked because Stoic, uh, he always tells us that he, he'd have me blocked. He had me muted. He said that I was talking too much about high win rate and all this other stuff. It was sounding unrealistic. So he had to mute me. So I'm always going to tell that story because he had me muted. But that tweet, it said that if price takes a high, and trades back to that low and doesn't violate it, expect the high to get violated. 
Likewise, it's the same thing here. If price takes a low and trades back to the high that took the low, expect it to go down and violate that low. So all that is, in plain English, is bullish and bearish flips. So this is the basics of what the master class teaches a lot of you guys, teaches everyone who watches it. Not only that, let me just move this back here again. Not only that, but the same thing on the downside we mentioned. We're expecting 50% taps, right? Now, what you guys need to understand is that sometimes we don't make it back to the 50%. And there are times where when we do, you get a little doji that forms here, something like that, and then they go to take the high. So a lot of people get caught in these. And the main thing, the, the rule of thumb, I taught this in the free play, F-R-E-E, -E, the free playlist. I taught this in the free playlist. Guys, give Rusty a follow. Come on, we back testing. What are you doing? What you you paying attention? Because you're gonna be the person that's coming and asking why you keep getting clapped. Because in class, look at the way you're paying attention. The way you practice is the way that you're going to play. So the rule of thumb is that as we are creating these swings, right? What we are doing, and I continue to tell you guys this over and over again. Usually in a healthy market, you have four to six swings before you can expect price to reverse. So we count our swings, right? This is not counting candles. This I need you guys to understand this. This is not counting candles. This is counting your highs and your lows. Now, somebody that the, the smart here is going to say, well, aren't swings just down candles? Yes, it is. But you're not counting candles. The reason why is you're counting the swings and you're seeing how far you are in that move up before price begins to pull back or reverse. But the swings are relative to the time frames that they are from, right? So what did we say about this? We said that these are 15 minute swings, right? So that means that this having two swings already on the 15 minute, we know that we often get four to six in a healthy market. So when you get into your POI back here, when you get into your, your, uh, um, when you get into your IPDA 57 Stingray logger, when you, when you get into that over here, what ends up happening with this is that everybody sees a low in here before that high was put in. Everybody sees that low that's right in here get violated. And now since an imbalance form coming out of this, everybody's like, oh, displacement, FVG with the breaker to the left and William just get it. Because you had zero confirmation that price wanted to trade lower. If price wanted to trade lower from here, it would look to take this out and close, then trade back in here. So when you're on the one minute 
and you're watching those flash moves down and you see an imbalance open up. Everybody's like, oh my, oh, FVG. Everybody's ready to jump in on a displacement. Silver bullet showed up, all this different stuff. And then they still get cooked. Because IPDA 1117 back here, it tapped in and they mentioned that it respected it, but no confirmation was given. We trade with confirmation. We don't just trade because price is tapping into something and we expect the sell side now to be taken out. We are trading with market structure. And when that structure is broken, that's the only time we change our idea of where we believe the market is going. Now, it's not that simple, obviously, because everybody would be a millionaire if they understood this. Now, could, can this basic knowledge here make you profitable? Yes. That's where most of those people who are on Twitter, you see them killing it, absolutely destroying the market with free information, never joining the mentorship because they find the ability to trade within these little market cycles. But if they're being honest with themselves, they know that it gets difficult and it gets tricky when we begin to what? Range. So they have their, let me actually just go up here. They have their highs and lows that are being created and they get in here and now they see this. They see a low get taken there and then they see a high go back to get taken there. And then they see a high get taken there and now they think that we're bullish and then they see a low drop back into there. And now we going up there and they believe that we're bearish and they see price go back up above there and then trade back into that low there. And all you see is something like this. Sorry, all you see is something like this. You're in a range. But you can't make sense of the little structure that it's making in there and a little structure in there and a little structure going up there and a little structure going down there and a little structure going up there. Oh, it looked like it flipped. Yeet, no, it didn't. Oh, it looked like it's going for the draw. Yeet, no, it's not. Oh, it looks like it's going for the draw here. Let me see if I can get in and get higher prices. Yeet, price drops down below. Because ranges are the only things that end up making it look a bit different. But even in a range, it's still the same. Now we already sent you guys a video on ranges, tops and the bottoms of the ranges. You guys will see more of that in real time. Nothing is better than real time. You will see a lot more of that and understand what to do just by observing the narrative when it plays out, when it plays out. So the thing you have is your highs and lows, market structure uh, uh, breaks, bullish flips, bearish flips, the 50% of the range, and counting your swings. You have that. That criteria is no imbalance needed. No break or brock needed. No nothing of anything else that's designed from somewhere else and built into some other system needed. It's not needed at all. And in fact, if you choose to hold on to it, it's going to slow down your learning. Because this, what we are trading here, is light years ahead of anything you've ever seen, no matter who has refined it. I don't care what mind you believe, right? What mind you believe is brilliant and made this and this is the, no. You don't need nothing else. You don't need your standard deviations. You don't need any of that. You need to know how price looks before you are engaging with your entry, period. All the other bells and whistles come later on. So over the next two weeks, you guys need to understand this. You need to back test this. You need to refine this. There are times where it will not tap into the 50%. You need 
to allow that to happen. If you try to skip ahead and start using advanced material like the 30 or the 70, you will get cooked. They will smoke you up. So this is the basics of the strategy that we teach. Now, there are more refined uh, uh, material. There's more refined material that's that's coming. But you got to get good with this. Nothing else but this. Okay? Nothing else but this. This is a quick summary and recap of video one and two. Now that you have that, it's important to get back to the playlist because the stuff that's explained there, you need it to build on. The stuff that's explained inside of there, you need it. You can get rid of the imbalance part. You don't even have to listen to it. Skip over that. I don't trade imbalances anymore. But the stuff that's explained, you need it. It is very important. For you guys to have because you cannot build new stuff on top of zero foundation. You didn't even create the foundation yet and you're trying to pile more stuff on that. You know what they call that? A dumpster, a garbage can, a hole, something you just drop in. That's that's a dump. This is this is about creating something that has a, a structure to it and it keeps you as the trader in that structure you guys hear me it keeps you as a trader in that structure when you tilt and fomo the system is not fomoing the system is not tilting the system doesn't need any psychology for it to play out it will play out the way that it is taught. If you back test it, learn to see it, learn to engage with it, that is 50% of your win rate right there. What I just taught you guys just now is 50% of your win rate. So when I first started trading, there was a mentors group that I joined and he said his win rate was 30%. 30% wasn't enough to change my situation. 30% wasn't enough to remove that eviction over my head, to feed my kids. None of that. 30% would have destroyed me as a trader. My psychology would have been gone. If I learned to trade and be successful 30% of the time. Now, I don't care about the whole RR thing, you guys are going to say, oh yeah, well, 30% is still, you know, possible to be profitable with a good amount of RR. That's not what we're focusing on. We're trying to focus on stopping you from losing. That's the first thing. You can only exercise good RR based on winning. If you have a 2% win rate and you have a, a, an average RR in that win, in the wins of, let's say, six, seven, or 12, but you have a 2% win rate. How many times are you going to have to lose in order to finally win something? That takes away from your mental capital. That takes away from your decision-making later on. That hurts your judgment in the process. So you need something with a high win rate. And then RR comes after that, after you have found enough experience in the market to be able to enter, to feel the confidence of pressing the button and seeing price get to your target, the, the RR comes later. The winning needs to come now. Not the RR, the winning. And you guys already were told that one-to-ones is what you guys should consider. One to ones. So, let me bring this back some. And now show you when this 
market structure shift happens here, right? Or or when this market structure shift happens here, So that's both of them. The bearish one up here, the bullish one down here. When this happens, what's often occurring that a lot of people are not seeing, and I already addressed this in the first video of the playlist, that I'm dead serious when I say that, that everybody on the planet who has access to YouTube has access to that free information and can change their circumstances forever if they just were diligent with it. But after that low is taken, let's start with this bearish flip. After that low is taken, what you often have is something that's unmitigated just below that low that price taps into and brings you back into that previous range, right? It's something just below that low that it finds its support on and push back into that previous range, right? Oftentimes that is a down candle. Oftentimes that's a little one minute bullish flip that happened in here that price never came back to tap into, but you saved it for later. And then you saw it later came down and pushed off of it. And still gave you the one to one out of the out of the zone, even if the fifty percent wasn't tapped. But still, later came back and delivered that one to one to you. So beneath every low, very important. Beneath every low that's taken, right? There is something unmitigated just below it that causes the market to trade back into that previous range, right? There is something below it unmitigated. We run that low, tap into something else violating both this low and the low of the zone, and we tap into something lower. And you see price make its way what? Back into where? the previous range. So that's where these moves come from. The, the, uh, uh, the moves that initiate the pullback because then the moves that initiate the continuation happen from the zones, right? Happen from the zones, happen from the zones, right? So likewise, when we flip up above like that again it's something up above here that it taps into to provide that move back into what the previous range before it begins to trade up again so that was a lot of information that I just gave you guys and that information needs to be back tested so much that you know it more than your mother's name. You need to back test it and burn it into your brain what you discover with the data that you are using. Burn it. Because it's going to save your life. It's going to save your account. So. If anybody has any questions about stop loss, that means you didn't watch the playlist because in video eight and video seven, we've already taught that if you're shorting from a zone, your stop loss is behind it. Unless you know how to figure out what, how to refine it through what video four. So anytime you trade back into the previous range, where's your stop? Right behind the zone. We tap into the 50% and you're targeting what? Either the one-to-one -one if you, you know, are learning 
And if you're greedy and that's not enough for you while you're learning to make money because you still can't get a grasp on consistent profitability, you're going to target some more and then it's going to come right back to break even for you. So I need you guys to understand your stops are behind whatever zone that you have chosen, right? So if this is an hourly zone, if this is a weekly zone, if this is a yearly zone, your stop loss is behind that yearly area, that yearly high for you to tap back into the 50%, right? And then short, not your OT yeet. 50%, right? But back into the 50% of the previous range. So those are the basic rules of trading this system. Now, you might see me sometimes take a long while somebody else is taking a short down into there you might actually see me take a long somewhere inside of here and then the market drop further down to there and a student is in a short while i'm in this long right here it's all about preference this environment this kind of system provides you with what uh the obvious the short the long, the short, 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 the long. You see how all the way through you can trade every bit of it. But you have to know where you're expecting your counter trend versus where you are expecting your continuation. And if you're trading on the side of the trend, your continuation is up above. It's not, this is what people need to get. When you're trading on the side of the trend, it's not, oh, we tapped into the zone and you saw it go here and you said, okay, yeah, let me open up a short there. Because if we end up putting in equal lows and we trade back up, now you're getting cooked chasing price here and your stop, your invalidation is up there assuming more risk than you need to because chasing price for what because you were late you got a phone call you didn't see it and, and then some something happened and, and then you saw it actually going and it missed the alert and then now you said okay yeah you know it's going down now so let me try to get in and then you see it go back up the other way yeet so many of us has, have been in entries where this has happened. Not even understanding, right? Not even understanding that when they tried to chase the low and take price lower and we broke below that and we tapped into something unmitigated there, that unmitigated portion was enough on the 15 minute time frame now to tap here and now begin to what put in another high up above here boy so many of us been in entries where we chose to remove our stop loss and we knew price just had to go lower and we did not get in at a good position and we watch price boy just carry us to our funeral because of chasing so we have a little motto that's here if you're not there for the tap then that trade, if you got in up here, if you got in there, if you got in to go long there, if you got in, that trade is cap. If you're not there for the top, 
that trade is cap. That trade is nonsense. That trade is foolery. It's a bag of foolery for you to be in, getting in, thinking that you have enough money to take another high over here. And you're getting in up here. And then we put in a wick at that high and then fail and go down that way. Very important. This is not a system that creates the need to chase. When you backtest and you refine, you learn how to get involved with the things that leave you behind. When you backtest and you refine, you learn to get involved with the things that leave you behind. It's not chasing to get involved. It's learning how to get involved within the order flow of price and what it's reaching into based on the higher time frame and knowing that the position that you're in it's not one that price is looking to come back to and trade below, down to your stop loss. Come back to and take you out at break even, then go the way you're, you're anticipating price going. I've never done an in-depth beginner's, uh, uh, you know, sort of di display presentation like this. As in-depth as this, carry a couple of videos across one uh, uh, one explanation, but guess what? This explanation is not enough because the back testing portion of it and the videos, the videos that are on YouTube, they teach you about trading up above specific candles. They teach you about what area you should look for when we're pulling back to look for that long. They teach you how to refine that stuff. And we also have material here that's going to help you guys to understand that. But guess what? That material cannot be released and it will not be fruitful for anyone who does not first learn how to do this one thing and it's follow structure. So I keep telling people, you can become profitable with one move, with one entry style. For me, my whole trading journey came from one move. I only teach one thing, just one. I'm looking for one thing alone. You guys know video four? Video four was the only information that I had to find profitability. The only information that I had to become profitable and save my situation was video one. That's why sometimes you see me using the wicks and then sometimes you hear me say, oh, you know, the wick is manipulation. That's what I was learning. Now I know always a wick, period. No matter what, if it leaves you and you found no way to get in, you couldn't get in. Your experience barred you from getting in on that move. Accept it and wait for the next setup or else you're going to get burned. This is a system that requires discipline. It is highly precise. You guys already know that. That's why you joined. You understand that. You join because you understand how precise this is. And if you can just learn how to find that precision, then you can just get in the market, what, two, three times a day and live your best life for the rest of your life. If you can just figure this, that's what the market is. I'm sorry, I can't advocate for working jobs. I can't. I know other people do. I can't. Why can't I? Because I know the power of the market. There's no way that I could understand how powerful free money coming out of a market is. And I'm telling somebody to go settle for a job. Absolutely not. I can't do that. Because I already came into the power of what the market can do for a year. One year. One 
whole year. You give it your best. You give it your all. You will never feel any struggle again when it comes to trading if you give it that one year. It will be a turbulent year. It will be, you know, trying. It will be tough. It will be confusing at times. You might go through ups and downs in your emotion. You might feel depression, anxiety, whatever it is, but give it that year. Because guess what? When you were working at your job, and if you're still working at your job, you went there when you were sick. You went there when you were tired. You went there when you were heartbroken. You went there when you were happy. When you were angry. You went there. Every single emotion that you experienced, you went there, and guess what you did? You did the job. You did the job still to the best of the ability. You still did the job. And guess what? They still treated you like you was nothing while you were giving them everything. Everything you were giving them. So this is something for you guys to back to us. Now we're going to go over a lot more of this throughout the next you know, few sessions, but this is what you guys are missing. Some of the people who are honest, and I'm glad you guys were honest about not watching the playlist. Some people come in here and lie. Somebody wrote to me and was like, hey, I watched the orientation video, but I don't know what to do. Boy, you. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I watched it. I don't... Sir. So let, let's let's get on over here. Cause we, we're going to, we're going to get back to some of this stuff. Um, you know, another time, but that's video one and two summarized. You still got to see it in real time because again, it doesn't always look the same in real time. It doesn't always, that's what I said. It doesn't always look the same.